What's going on guys? In this video, we'll be going over queues. Now, queues are basically a container of data items slash commands that are waiting to be retrieved. You can basically control the flow of your tasks utilizing queues. Say you're receiving data from a website and then you manipulate the data and then you're writing the data to a file. So we have these three steps that sort of rely on the previous steps. You can't manipulate the data if you haven't received the data from a website yet. And you don't want to save the data if you haven't modified it yet. So queuing can ensure this workflow is done in a very clean and organized manner. It can make sure that you won't save the data unless it's been modified and you won't, you won't try to modify data if you don't have any data. We'll start off by going over three types of queues. FIFO, F-I-F-O, there's LIFO, L-I-F-O, and then there's a priority, priority. Did I spell that right? Okay, yeah. So FIFO is first in, first out, LIFO is last in, first out, and priority is just priority. Okay. Now, when we want to utilize queues, the first thing we need to do is uh, import queue. So first, let me just get rid of this. Okay. All right. So it's just uh, import Q. Q U E U E. Now, now we have to create an instance of Q. So that's just uh, Q equals Q dot Q. Okay. So this Q dot Q, this uh, Q portion with the capital Q, actually represents um, one type of Q. It, in this case, it represents the uh, first in, first out type of Q, which is the def <coughs> which is the default type of Q. All right. So we've uh, initialized the queue. Now what we want to do is we want to put items or actions into this queue. So the way we put things into a queue is simply queue.put. Now, now we can decide what we want to put in this queue. In this case, I'm going to put a five, an integer five into the queue. So if we run this, we now have a, a queue which is not empty and it's holding the integer five. All right, so if you want to get an item, from the queue, we use print, uh, not print, we use queue.get. So in this case, I'm just going to print out the output of queue.get, which should be five. So I'm just going to run this once again. And as you can see, we get an output of five. Now, if we had many items within a queue, uh, which item we pull out with queue.get depends on the queue. So in our case, we have first in, first out. Uh, first in, first out always pulls out the first item that was put in. So now that we've, we've put an item into the queue and we've gotten an item out, our queue should be empty. And one way we can check if our queue is empty is by this uh, queue.empty method. So let's just run this and it should produce a value. If not, we'll just print it out. Okay, it's not producing a value, so uh, let's just print this out. It should produce a Boolean value. All right, so let me just uh, run this. Okay, so if you guys can see it, it's pulling out true, saying that it is indeed empty. And the reason is, of course, because we put one item into the queue and then we pulled out one item. So of course we should have an empty queue. So I just want to go back to um, the idea of first in, first out. So first in, first out means the first item put in will be the first item we get. So as an example, I'm going to show you a loop for i in so for i in range five uh, q dot put i. So we're putting five items into our queue, and then we're going to just uh, pull them out using while well, not q dot empty uh, print q dot get. And we'll just uh, make sure everything looks clean. So we'll just put a, a little space in between each um, print statement. All right. So while not queue.empty, this looks good. Okay. So I can actually get rid of this. Um, yeah. So we'll just uh, comment that out. And this looks good. Let's just run it. Okay, 
So if you look at the output, we get uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So we put in, uh, four, uh, we put in five items, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and we're sort of pulling them out in the same order that we put them in. And that's exactly what first in, first out is. Whatever you put in first is going to be the first item that's going to be pulled out. All right. Now, I want to go over something with the q.empty. Why do we need to use q.empty? The reason for this is because if we try to get, if we try to use a q.get and the queue is empty, our program will block or freeze till the q.get is, excuse me, till the q.get is satisfied. So as an example of this, let me show you. Okay. So we're going to clear this out and I'll actually uncomment this because we are going to use this once again. All right. Okay, q.empty, we don't need this. What I'm going to do is actually, I will print uh, first item gotten. So this will let us know that we've got the first item. Then we want to q.get again, and then we'll say finished, because in this case, we want to pull out two items. I want to show you that we never hit the uh, print finish statement because our program sort of freezes at the print q.get the second print q.get. So this is known as blocking. Uh, let me explain this once more in a very, uh, in a more uh, clear manner. But um, we're only putting in one item, as you can see, q.put, we're putting one item, but we're trying to get two items from this uh, queue. We're trying to get two items from this queue. So the problem is that this is going to cause our program to freeze. And I want to show you that by running this script. Let's run this, okay. So we have five, we have first item gotten, and then our, and our script has frozen. Usually what happens is, usually we have a different thread putting items into a queue and another thread pulling out items. So that's how it's usually resolved. We have another thread sort of putting in items and another thread sort of pulling out items. So it keeps that balance. But here, we're not using any threads, so this will indefinitely freeze. So I'll have to manually uh, terminate this. Um, which I guess is just going to be done like this. All right, I'll have to open a Python console. All right, that's done. So I'm going to now show you how we can sort of take care of this problem using threads. And so how we can actually prevent this problem from happening. So let's just see, I will start off by import uh, threading, we'll import time. Okay, so we always have to create a function. In this case, in this case, we'll call this function putting thread because we're going to be putting items uh, into the queue. So the only uh, parameter or attribute of this function is going to be queue. So while true, we'll have an infinite loop, print uh, starting thread, okay. We're going to first sleep for 10 seconds. So every 10 seconds, we're going to be putting an item. Put in, we'll put in five, and then anytime we put something, we'll let ourselves know that we put something, and this should be good. Okay, let me see, make sure we're still recording. Okay, all right, so that looks okay. All right, now we have q equals q dot q. What we're going to do is t equals threading dot thread. We're creating a thread instance. Of course, the target is going to be putting thread uh, args is just going to be q. Whenever you use a one a attribute, one parameter, just one argument. Whenever you use one argument, um, you want to make sure that you use a comma. For some reason, this if you don't use this comma, it breaks. Okay, and we're going to actually turn this into a. I just uh, make this a little bigger. Okay, a daemon thread. We're going to make this into a daemon thread. All right, let me just uh, fix some of the spelling here. Threading. Okay, that should be good. So this is a daemon thread. Um, yeah, so if you guys don't know the basics of threading, please check out the first few videos of this playlist. I will actually put the links to those uh, videos in the description. So they go over um, threading as well as well as what daemon threads are. And it's actually daemon threads. All right, here we go. All right, so let's see, have the T, now we just want to start it. All right, so q.get first item gotten uh, and finish. So 
our goal is to, of course, see this uh, finish statement. So this is how you sort of prevent the uh, the problem that we're running into. If you utilize threads, you could continuously put something into your queue, and you can make this thread a daemon thread so that once the main program finishes, this uh, daemon thread will automatically terminate. So let's just run this. This seems to be okay. T dot, what am I doing? T equals, it's T dot star. Okay. So one thing I want to point out actually before I run this this script is that um, since we're running from the Python console, what's going to happen is daemon thread is not going to work uh, properly due to a bug. Um, if you watch my video on the daemon thread, you'll see that this anytime you try to utilize a daemon threads from any sort of Python console, IPython console, you will evoke this uh, this bug. The only way to properly run, as far as I know, uh, daemon threads is through the command prompt. So. But the whole point of um, this script is to show you that we're going to be able to get to this print statement. So in other words, uh, we're going to be blocked for a little while, but then once the, the uh, queue gets filled again, we'll be able to allow the second get to pull an item that will allow us to move forward and uh, hit this uh, print finish statement. So let me just run this code and you'll, you'll see the bug as well as um, us being blocked for a little while and then the program will continue moving forward. All right, so I'm just going to run this. So first item gotten, okay, so we're printing out this part, and now we're stuck here. We're stuck at this print queue, queue.get, and we're waiting for this other thread. There we go. We just, the other thread was able to put something, and that's why we were able to uh, move forward. As you can see, the, um, the daemon thread's not working because despite our main program finishing, the daemon thread has not been killed, and this is a bug in when you use uh, Python consoles as opposed to the command prompt. Uh, let's just restart this. Okay, so one more thing I want to point out is um, when we get an item, which sometimes um, it's advisable to do is actually create a variable to hold these items. So a lot of times what you'll see in code is that um, you can actually store the items you're getting from a queue. You can store into a variable and um, you can reuse that variable for uh, other types of functions. I'm going to show you that it pulls out um, this variable is going to store this queue.get item and then we'll be able to print that item. It's storing the five in X and if we print X, it's uh, going to output five. So sometimes it's useful to store these, uh, these uh, values that you're getting into variables and then you can reuse these uh, variables. So yeah, so that's, uh, that's just a little tip I want you guys to keep in the back of the mind. All right. So that's it for uh, this introduction to queues. In the next video, I will go over uh, the differences between all three queues. All right, thank you, and I will see you guys next time.